G'day guys, welcome to the round five review for Supercoach 2022 and it's fair to say we had a pretty mediocre week, 2,173, a top 25% score. Unfortunately though, we did drop 1.4k spots in the rankings, putting us down to the top 3% overall, which is quite annoying, I'm not going to lie, but yeah, it was one of those things, keep in mind I watched absolutely no footy over the weekend, I went... Up the Murray River for Easter, which was really good, but yeah, didn't see any football, so it was quite hard to assess the team. I had just enough, or just enough reception and and data just to scrape over Supercoach to make some changes. Thankfully, because there was not really much reception up there at all, but uh, as a result, didn't really get much of a look at it. So it's hard to get a, a real read on how players did. What I do know is that Aaron Hall is out. Matt Rowley is completely underdone and, yeah, a couple of other bits and pieces. But, yeah, 5 out of 10 league wins. So, yeah, about as par and as mediocre as it gets. We've got 30 trades left at the moment. So, I think we're still in a pretty good spot and I only reckon we're going to progress higher up. So, yeah, without further ado, as always, we will get stuck straight into the team. And, yeah, I think it's looking really good. A couple of mishaps, but we're going we're gonna to fix them right away. So... As the internet loads, here we go. So, Jack Crisp in defence. Oh, we were all worried, weren't we? But, no, he's he's cemented himself as a clear top six defender. Uh, yeah, I, what I do know is that he he's actually playing really good in the midfield. I did get a bit of a look at this game because it was on Thursday night against the Lions. And winning a lot of clearance work and getting some contested possessions too. Just a bit, bit poor disposal, which is a, a shame, but... Playing really good footy is Jack Crisp, and um, yeah, really unlucky and a bit of a shame if you if you trade him earlier on. Uh, Jane Short, a, a player that I, I didn't get to watch over, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, one of the two, but uh, yeah, pretty underdone. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, I'm just going to back him in for a response because he's had a, a really good season. So yeah, don't trade him after that. It's just ludicrous. He'll, he'll respond because he's been really good uh, this year. Hewitt. Another ton. This guy is unreal. Could he be? Could he be D two at least? I think he could be close. But yeah, playing out of his skin. Someone that I, I was very happy to start uh, round one. So yeah, a little bit of risk because it was, it was a play. You kind of you paying up for him as a keeper at the start. Three nine nine k. So it's a little bit overs for a stepping stone. But um. Yeah, all in all, really happy with this pick. Uh, Aaron Hall. This is the this is the big one. So. This one sucked a bit because he was on, I think he was on about 65 points at half time. So on track for a huge score. But it was it was so bizarre because he went off with looked like hamstring soreness. Uh, I don't know if he, it was soft tissue or anything. He's notorious for soft tissue injury. But instead of getting scaled down, when he got, well, when he got subbed out, he was on about 65, pretty much when he got half time. But... He got more points for it. I don't know what ha- will happen there, but nonetheless, 71. Don't know how long he's out for. I don't care. I'm pissing him off this week. I've had it up to here with this pick. Um, I should have known. I bloody should have known. Had hamstring soreness. I traded him in as a pod 4% of teams, and that's hurt me. That is why we've dropped in the rankings this week, because not a lot of the competition copped this one, and I did, and it sucks, but we're going to assess it. He is on the chopping block. There is no doubt about that. And something else you guys will know about this team, particularly in defense, is Spills, where is Ridley? Well, I dropped him last week. So my logic for that was I think Cali is just taking way too many of his intercepts. He's losing kick-ins and the red flags are just they're just continuing. He had one good game, but that was on the MCJ. It was a very open game, had a lot of space, but even then was losing was losing kick outs. So yeah, I I sort of panic traded Ridley because I had a bit of a hunch. I I for some reason just didn't believe that he was a top six defender, let alone top ten. I don't even I think maybe top fifteen, but having a dreadful year, Jordan Ridley and my boys, my bombers are having the worst year ever. So I did trade Ridley last minute to who was it again? I think down the forward line. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, I dream of Heaney made his way into the team. So, this was a good trade. I was going to go Doherty. That was one that I was very, very hot on, and he went 80. So, this was a good move. 
And the rookie that I dropped, uh, who was it? I can't really remember. I had to sort of move somebody else along to get him in, but it didn't affect me at all, nonetheless. It's actually worked out quite significantly. I'm trying to remember exactly what I did um, because, yeah, it's, that's rattled me. But, yeah, nonetheless, we got Ridley out of the team, which was a very good move in hindsight. Oh, Drew School, there we go. So I... I got Audrey School in for somebody. I'm not, I can't, can't bloody remember. But it doesn't matter. So defense is looking pretty good. We'll get rid of Aaron Hall this week. And, um, yeah, McCartan was, was solid, 68. That's what you want from him. And then Audrey School went bang with another ton. So, yeah, very happy that I traded him in. And, yeah, got a negative break even, as he should. So really solid stuff. I should get hinged back this week. Uh, wasn't rested, but was played in the twos because had a little bit of a niggle i think you'll be right and the conning's fine slow burn whatever uh midfield captain mccray unbelievable had the vc on neil you're not taking that and he dominated against a helpless north melbourne on good friday there was nothing better to watch and i yeah, really enjoyed watching him play it's a bonus when he gets on to he gets on the end of a goal, McRae. It was just unbelievable to see, and I was out of my seat for that one. Just had a complete game like he did last week. And again, another VC option. So, yeah, absolutely superb stuff. And Neil had a huge first half, but then got a bit of a tag uh, late in the third quarter into the fourth quarter. So that was a bit unfortunate. Couldn't really finish off his hard work, but... Yeah, in hindsight, it was a good call because if, if he'd went 125 or 130, I would have taken it missed out on the McRae 153. So, yeah, everything sort of worked out for the best. And Tuke Miller, really underdone. I know his disposal's been a bit shitty, uh, but, yeah, that's all I've got to work with because, again, I watched no footy over the weekend, barely. So, And then Dunkley, 100, watched this game, just butchered it a little bit. But, yeah, everyone's got him, so it doesn't really matter too much. And that's what I did, so... Yeah, when I got O'Driscoll in, I, I used DPP to swing Dunkley in the midfield and then get Heaney down forward, I, as I actually remember that. So that's what I did, and that looked like it was a very good move. So you're getting a 112 and a 103 from Heaney and O'Driscoll, and you're avoiding it. I think Ridley got 85, and Doherty got 88. So well, I missed Doherty, but then... Uh, who was... was he it was a rookie I traded out as well. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, things are looking pretty good anyway. So, yeah, a bit rattled here. I don't know. It, it's hard because yeah, I'm not in super coach mode at all. I I was away for the long weekend and put my phone down and there was no footy. So it's amazing how out of form you are in your videos when you can't bloody remember what happened. But, yeah, that's all good. We're up to Matty Rao. So if I'm not mistaken... 19% of the competition is trading out Matt Rowe. I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look here. 17.6. Oh, come on, man. I mean, have some loyalty. He's under a bit of pressure and copping well, an absurd amount of adversity in the media. Uh, he got slammed by maybe it was Kane Corns or something like that on Footy Classified. But, yeah. Copping a bit because he's just playing an inside role and apparently looks fit. All of his all of his possessions are just contested. So, yeah, it is quite worrying, but we picked him for a reason. We saw what he did against West Coast in round one and had a couple of good stints. Just needs to score a little bit more. I'm backing him in. I'm going to hold him for another week. So, was he break even? I think it's 103. So... Quite vulnerable to drop a bit in coin. That's okay. If he does, then you trade him next week. But I'm going to stick fat with this pick because he's a type of bloke that could just explode. And we picked him for a reason because of his unbelievable form in the Amy series. And I, Amy series, and I just think we he's better than this. And the you know, number one draft pick probably thinks he is too. So I hope that under the cloud of adversity, he's he's dealing with at the moment i'm expecting a response from what is a, a true professional of the game so yeah i love matty Rao and i picked him for a reason i'm going to stick fat and uh hopefully he can respond this week or well, if he doesn't it's okay at least i gave him a chance we'll, we'll trade him next week but yeah super disappointing the way he's been playing and yeah every every possession is just contested and butchers it a little bit lost that outside game that explosiveness the the ability to finish goals and accumulate it doesn't have that anymore, which is quite alarming. But yeah, hopefully he can he can respond very soon. 
Uh, Nick Dacos. Oh, yes. Got defender status. Oh, it's such a relief because I've been wanting to put him in defense for quite a while. You guys will see what I do in a minute. A Horn Francis was underdone. Got smashed by the dogs. It's not his fault. We won't see that again. And Joshy Ward was uh, was very, very good. But, yeah, I really want to hold this guy because I think he's heading in the right direction. I'm, I'm expecting some response, a bit of a response from what has been a pretty underwhelming season from a rookie with a high ceiling. But because of my trades this week, I think I'm going to have to get rid of him. You guys will see that uh, momentarily. And we got Kripa back this week. I oh, stuck fat with him. I hope he can make 20% of the competition pay for trading him. Very silly. He's only out for a week. Give him a chance. Just a bit of hamstring soreness. Doesn't seem to be soft tissue, I don't think. Uh, just rest him and he'll bounce back. No doubt about it. Back in the big man in. Josh Rochelle, uh avoided the uh, rookie roulette. So, yeah, I... I would have taken it if it was a bit better. I thought he played pretty well, Rochelle. He looked unreal in the highlights, but must have just done nothing else. And then Josh Ward, obviously, much better. So, yep, Ned Long prevailing again, which is really good. Grundy, super underdone, but I'm holding because I just I just can't afford to trade him. I'm not in the situation yet. Wits was pretty ordinary as well, but I still got some money to make. Pretty low break even, I think, 38. So, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll... He will respond. I think he can average high 90s to low 100s. That would be a win. We'll see how we go. Dixon solid. Heaney, you just love that. Another another good Friday performance from him. Bit disappointing. Missed a couple of gettable shots and had a high amount of time on the bench as well. So this could have been another 130 easily. The bloke is in unreal form. George called it. Hit the, um, hit the nail on the head with this pick. Full preseason. Uh, and Heaney is good, good selection. So, yeah, full credit to George for this one. He was all over him, stuck fat with him when everybody else jumped off because he might be vulnerable to too much time in the forward line. And, uh, yeah, that was a good move by him. So, yeah, happy with this selection. Uh, yeah, it's good to be on the train once and for all. Zach Butters responded 4.5%, I think, of the competition. Got rid of him last week. Stop trading your primos. Keep him. They're going to – they make you pay. I, I – and I think Rao as well. I mean, I reckon Rao could go 130 this week. Like, yeah, he's not in the best form, but just to punish people from getting rid of him, I can't believe the amount of people getting like getting him on the chopping block. It's absurd. Uh, Canelio, very solid, 96. Uh, GWS aren't having the best season, but Canelio's definitely having a good season. I don't think he's a keeper, though. Someone that we hold into all the buyers, maybe. Just keeps making money, but, yeah, he would be someone that we can flip for a... A much, or well, ex- much more expensive player, but we'll assess that when we come to it. But Cog's really good stuff. I'm going to hold him as long as we can. Will Brody, unreal. Same sort of justification. Probably not a keeper, I wouldn't imagine, and neither is Cherry, who had another really good game as well. So, uh, yeah, watched him a little bit. Had a good game against English, who was also in supreme form. And Ned Long was my loophole uh, for Hayes. Got the 105, which was good. And, yeah, so teams looking pretty well. So, trades for this week. We're going to do two trades this week. So, this is what we are thinking. Real sort of pod move, I reckon. But we're going to just load up on Ruckman. So, and this will be the structure too. So, Dacos goes back. Martin goes midfield, which is super handy. We've got Ned Long in the midfield that we can loop with... Martin and Rochelle, that would probably be the case, I reckon. Uh, Grundy Wits, fine. Proust will come in, and he's going to make a stuck load of cash on the bench. Uh, I've I've been hot on this pick for a long time, quite against it in terms of having him at R2, but, yeah, a little bit of a, a Riley O'Brien type for 2019, just a really good moneymaker on the bench that is going to... Help us out over the buyers. Does he have the same buyers, Grundy and Wits? I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But nonetheless, I think he's a superb uh, talent and going to make a lot of coin. Uh, unfortunately, I have I had to get rid of Ward because I'd love to get rid of McDonald, but I just don't have the, the cash gen to do so. But uh, nonetheless, I think Bruce is going to make a lot more money than Ward long term. And 
yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And then we are getting in Tim English. He's in supreme form, having an unreal season. Plays Adelaide. That's not the easiest matchup. But then he plays Essendon. That's Sam Draper. He's going to tower on him. Went 200 plus. I think it was 208 he went on Draper in... Was it Draper? I know it was Essendon, but yeah, in 2020, just absolutely tore him to shreds, playing full-time ruck, having an all-Australian ruckman year, probably R1 for the whole year. Um, alongside Darcy, who doesn't play, well, 22 games. So he could be the solution that I don't, for or for me, not having to jump back on Maxi Gorn. So really happy with this pick. Plays Port Adelaide as well. So that means he's, with Lysette out, he's got Hayes to go up against as well. So... Yeah, this is going to be what we go through with. So, yep, see you later, Warden, which is a shame. I really like Josh Ward, but he, he's the only one I got to trade for that money. And Aaron Hall, yeah, hamstring, soft tissue injury, probably going to be out for a few weeks. Cop this one on the chin, accept the defeat, and then we've got English and Proust. We're going to have some cash gen coming in and some really good scores. So, yeah, these will be my trades for this week. Most likely, what I could also do is just go Hall straight to Doherty, or Sinclair in defence, but then also in the midfield, I flirted with a, a Tom Green type who I could get to quite easily as well. So, And I'll be able to hold Josh Ward and get rid of McDonald for, for Green. So, yeah, let me know what you guys reckon of that. I just released a poll on Twitter as I'm recording this video on what I, what, what I should do. But, yeah, I'm really happy with this team. And, yeah, Cripper back. So, yeah, we're looking really, really good. So... Rochelle plays early, you got the loophole long, always going to benefit most of the time anyway. Our defense is a little bit light, only three deep, but you got Dacos and, and two look reliable looking scorers. Should get Hinge back, which is really bloody handy. We need him. Uh, Bruce, is, Bruce is in, so we love that. And the forward line, well, I don't even have a rookie. I've got Cherry at F6, so yeah, got could have a loophole on Hayes as well, so it's not too late. We'll, yeah, we'll see how we go, but that's the team for this week. I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter uh, what, exactly what we're going to be doing trade-wise and whether I'm locking this one in. 90% uh, sure this is what I'll do, but, uh, yeah, I will keep you guys updated. Get around it. I'm, I think I'm at 1,000 followers now, like really close on Twitter. So, yeah, appreciate the support. People getting around it. It's bloody unreal. But, yeah, hope you guys had a good week. Probably better than me, but... I'm I'm definitely coming back this week. I reckon really confident and bring on upgrade season. But until until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.